Hi, it's Katrina. My friend David is actually going to be helping me out today, so we can give you a little bit more variety. Everyone say hi. Number 10, the student who tried to kill Hitler. Maurice Bavor was a Swiss theology student who tried to assassinate Adolf Hitler in 1938. His is one of the lesser known plots of the many failed attempts to bring down the leader of the Third Reich, but it was also one of the bravest. Maurice was a member of the anti-communist group Campania du Mystère, one of the most obscure groups of the time. Not only were these guys anti-communist, but they were convinced that if communism was destroyed, the Romanovs would once again rule Russia and balance would be restored to the world. Maurice eventually became obsessed with the idea that killing Hitler was the only way to bring this potential future to life, and so he decided to assassinate the man himself. On October 9, 1938, Maurice traveled to Basel, purchased himself a Schmeisser 6.35mm pistol, and got to work figuring out a plan on how to get close to Hitler. He learned that a private audience was possible if he could get himself a letter of introduction from a foreign VIP. He forged a letter of introduction from the nationalist leader in France, Pierre Tatinger. The letter said that there was a second letter to be delivered to Hitler personally. This was enough to at least allow Maurice to learn Hitler's whereabouts. He learned that Hitler was in Munich, but would be leaving shortly after. By the time Maurice got to Munich, it was too late and the Fuhrer had left. Since he had no more money, Maurice had to stow himself away on a train to Paris to follow Hitler's trail. It was here where the conductor of the train discovered him, learned his plan, and turned him over to the Gestapo. He was then tried, found guilty, and was executed by guillotine on May 14th, 1941. Number 9. The July Plot The July Plot is by far the most famous attempt to murder Hitler. The men behind the plot were high-ranking German military leaders. These people recognized that Hitler's war effort was suicide for Germany. Fighting a war with the West and Russia would lead to nothing but the destruction of Germany. Their plan was to first assassinate Hitler, then stage a coup d'etat. They had plans for a new government to form in Berlin and put an end to the foolish war. The main players in this plot were Colonel General Ludwig Beck, Colonel General Friedrich Olbricht, Major General Henning von Tresco, and Lieutenant Colonel Klaus Schenk von Stauffenberg. All of these men died in 1944. The plan was to take place at a meeting in the Wolf's Lair, Hitler's secret command post in what back then was East Prussia. The room would be filled with 20 senior German officers and Hitler himself. It was Stauffenberg who planted the briefcase under the table, packed to the brim with explosives. He then said he needed to make a phone call, left the room, and the bomb went off at 12.42 p.m. The issue was that somebody had noticed the briefcase and moved it to the other side of the room, away from all the people. One man died instantly from the explosion, three others were mortally wounded, but Hitler and most of the others survived. In fact, Hitler was in such good shape and good spirits that he went on to meet the Italian dictator Benito Mussolini later that afternoon. Following the failed attempt on Hitler's life, about 200 people involved with the conspiracy were executed. Number 8. The Beer Hall Putsch The Beer Hall Putsch was the first time Hitler failed to be stopped. It was also Hitler's first failure. This was a botched coup d'etat in which Hitler's Nazi party failed to overthrow the German government in 1923. Hitler and about 2,000 Nazis marched on the Feldern Hall in the center of Munich, but they were faced by a fierce police presence. Six Nazi members were killed, and Hitler narrowly escaped with his life. The city square where the conspirators had clashed with police became an important memorial for the Nazi party. In the aftermath of his failed attempt to seize power, he was forced to flee into the countryside. He was later arrested and charged with treason. This should have been where Hitler was stopped once and for all, over a decade before the war even broke out, but it wasn't. He ended up being sentenced to five years in prison and only doing nine months. It was his time in prison that led him to write Mein Kampf, 
and which helped him realize he needed to take the country through political means instead of by force. Because of this, Hitler ended up developing Nazi propaganda and changing his tactics so that when the time came, he could seize the government. Number 7. Operation Spark Operation Spark was put together by a group of German army officers who called themselves the Black Orchestra. The name was coined by the leader of the group, Major General Henning von Tresco. He knew that while Hitler still lived and breathed, it would be impossible to take him out. The only way to save Germany from destruction was to kill Hitler and then institute a new head of power and stop the war. The Major General was behind several different attempts. One of them was in 1943, a year before the July plot that also failed. Hitler flew to his headquarters in Ukraine on February 19th and was planning to stay until March 13th. Before he would go back to Germany, he had plans to visit the AGC headquarters and meet with some of the officers before departing. This was when the Black Orchestra decided to take him out. They got themselves a bomb built from British plastic explosives. The bomb was to be smuggled onto Hitler's personal airplane and then detonated using a pencil detonator. This was something made of a thin copper tube filled with copper chloride. After about 10 minutes, the copper chloride would eat through the wire which held the spring-loaded firing pin back. The pin would hit the percussion cap and the mechanism would go off. They put the bomb in a fake box of liqueur. It was Tresco who convinced one of Hitler's staff to bring the bomb onto the plane. But as with every attempt on Hitler's life, luck favored him. The timer worked perfectly, but the percussion cap became too cold from being put in the cargo hold, and the bomb never went off. Number 6. Hitler's Unnecessary Rise to Power It was Winston Churchill who said World War II should have been called the Unnecessary War. This is because the real failure wasn't the assassins who never managed to kill Hitler, but the Western leaders who allowed the Nazis to rise to power and bring about the bloodiest conflict in human history. During the 1930s, there were plenty of chances to stop Hitler, but nobody bothered to do it. And when he took power in 1933, it was clear they had made a mistake. Hitler withdrew from the League of Nations and the World Disarmament Conference, then immediately went against the Treaty of Versailles, which was signed after World War I. This treaty forbade Germany from ever developing a military that could be used offensively. By 1935, it was clear that Hitler was planning to go to war. France and Britain both had the authority and the option of taking action against Germany, either economically or militarily. In the early stages of their military preparations, Germany was actually pretty weak. It would have been easy to neutralize the threat. Sadly, Western countries never acted. They sat idly by while Hitler amassed one of the biggest armies the world had ever seen, with a war machine unlike anything that had been let loose before. In 1936, he remilitarized the border with France. In 1938, Hitler forced Austria to join them. And while all this was going on, there was anti-Semitic violence and Hitler was slowly starting his big idea to commit genocide against the Jewish people. After Hitler demanded a piece of Czechoslovakia in 1938, it was pretty clear the Nazis were about to turn aggressive. Hitler then demanded territory from Lithuania and Poland. When Poland refused to give in, Hitler invaded and World War II had begun. But here's the kicker. While the Germans ravaged Poland, over a hundred divisions of British and French soldiers sat on the border of Germany with an extremely small German force in front of them. Had they acted in that moment, they could have marched on Berlin and stopped the Holocaust from ever happening. Instead, they waited and did nothing. And on May 10, 1940, three million German troops broke into France and took two million French soldiers prisoner all because the French hadn't been prepared. Number 5. George Elsa George Elsa missed assassinating Hitler by a mere 13 minutes. On November 8, 1939, Hitler made his annual speech at a beer hall in Munich. The event was supposed to commemorate the Nazi struggles of the 1920s. 
Hitler used his time to mock the rest of the world and boast about how successful the war would be. A few feet from where Adolf Hitler was standing as he made his speech, there was a bomb. It had been planted three weeks ago by George, who had actually started cooking his plan up the previous year. He realized the war was unavoidable under Hitler and decided to plant a bomb that would go off exactly when Hitler made his annual speech. The thing about Hitler was that he did this speech every year like clockwork at the very same time, and yet after doing it for so many years, the one year there was a bomb under his feet was different. He decided to leave 13 minutes earlier. There was nothing George could do, and his bomb blew up 13 minutes too late and killed eight people, none of them Hitler. The ceiling even came down in a devastating collapse of rubble in the very place Hitler had just been standing. Number 4. The Failure of the Maginot Line We know that in May of 1940, Germany entered France and destroyed it. What you might not know is that in 1914, 8.5 million French soldiers gathered their strength to fight Germany in World War I. Over 6 million were killed during the brutal trench warfare. Afterwards, the French government decided it was going to protect its border from Germany at all costs. This turned into the Maginot Line, a series of underground fortifications that stretched 300 miles. It was manned by gun turrets, tank traps, and huge concrete walls. There were also subterranean military bases, complete with hospitals. So why didn't the Maginot Line stop Hitler? Over 142 artillery forts and 5,000 bunkers should have stopped the German army from running through France pretty much unimpeded. The problem was that World War II was fought differently. The Maginot Line was designed to prevent the kind of infantry invasion seen back in 1914. Hitler attacked with a blitzkrieg, punching a solid hole into France through Belgium and the Netherlands instead of the northern border. The Great Maginot Line proved utterly useless. Number 3. March 21, 1943 Eight days after Major General Henning von Tresco failed to detonate a bomb at Hitler's private airplane, he tried to kill him again. He decided it was time for extreme measures. A man named Colonel Freiherr von Gerstorff was chosen to act as a kamikaze bomber. Hitler was going to be attending the Heroes Memorial Day at the Zeughaus Museum in Berlin, and Gerstorff was to blow the whole place up with bombs planted in his coat pockets. All the attempts had come so close, but Hitler always managed to be just the right distance away to avoid death. This seemed like the right move. The bomber would get right beside him so that their arms were touching, then blow himself up, taking Hitler with him. The issue was two minutes. Hitler was only going to be inspecting the exhibits for approximately eight minutes, but the fuses on the bombs were set for ten minutes. Gersdorf learned this too late, and had to call the whole thing off. There was no way to set the explosives off earlier because he was already at the museum and no way for him to follow Hitler when he left after those eight minutes. If they had only made the fuses for five minutes, Hitler would have been toast. Number 2. The Oster Conspiracy The Oster Conspiracy was the plot to kill Hitler in 1938 to prevent World War II from ever breaking out. There were a lot of men in the German military that believed an invasion of Czechoslovakia would be disastrous. One of those was Lieutenant Colonel Hans Oster. He had been watching Hitler since the early 1930s, and he knew he was dealing with a dangerous and psychotic individual. He came up with a plan to take Hitler out. Oster and other high-ranking German officers hatched a plot to storm the Reich Chancellery and take him by force. They would either arrest or kill Hitler on the spot, then restore the old German monarchy and make Prince Wilhelm of Prussia the leader of Germany. The plan never came to fruition because of two major things that happened. First, Neville Chamberlain, scared of the possibility of war, handed over certain parts of Czechoslovakia to Hitler, and on October 1, 1938, Poland annexed a chunk of Czechoslovakia. Hitler was suddenly seen as the greatest German statesman of all time, who was simply given large swathes of countries by foreign leaders. 
It suddenly became impossible in the eyes of Oster and his conspirators to simply overthrow Hitler's wildly successful government. Oster ended up getting caught in 1943 for helping Jews to escape Germany, then was executed in 1945 for his role in the July plot. Number 1. Eberhard von Breitenbuch On March 11, 1944, Eberhard von Breitenbuch tried to assassinate Hitler. Like so many failed conspirators, he too was recruited by Henning von Tresco. Eberhard was the reserve cavalry captain and an aide to the field marshal. He actually volunteered himself to assassinate Hitler, and so it was Tresco who gave him the mission. He described himself as a crack shot and was convinced if he got close enough, he would kill Hitler with his service pistol instead of using an unreliable bomb. Eberhard armed himself with a 7.65mm Browning and accompanied Field Marshal Ernst Busch to Hitler's residence in Birkhoff to attend a conference. The assassination attempt was foiled before it ever began because he was denied entrance into the building. He had gone all that way, concealed the pistol in his pants, and never even made it into the building, or got close enough to shoot Hitler. How different do you think things could have been if Hitler had been successfully assassinated? Let me know in the comments, and thanks for watching. Be sure to hit subscribe, and come back soon for more awesome videos from the channel.